Right, this is the first time that I'm actually not going to be reviewing some of it myself, but I'm going to be reading out some, somebody else's review. Um, this was something that I, was brought to my attention not too long ago. A friend at work says, go on Amazon.co.uk and do a search for Vite for, Vite for Men Hair Removal Cream and read some of the reviews. Um, and I read these and I seriously recommend that you go on there and read them yourself because these were so funny. I was actually crying with laughter, which was quite embarrassing considering that I was at work at the time. Uh, I'd just like to share some of these with you now. The first review by a guy called Andrew, he starts off by saying, Do not put on knob and bollocks. <laughs> Being a loose cannon who does not play by the rules, the first thing I did was ignore the warning and smear this all over my knob and bollocks. <laughs> the bollocks I knew and loved are gone now. In their place is a maroon-coloured bag of agony which sends stabs of pain up my body every time it grazes against a thigh or an article of clothing. I am suffering so you don't need to. Heed my lesson, do not put on knob and bollocks. I'm giving this product to five stars, because despite the fact that I think my bollocks might fall off, they are now completely hairless. This is a recurring fee, actually, despite all the pain that they're suffering, they actually do give it five stars. Uh, a guy from Denmark called A. Chapel says, After being told that my danglies look like an elderly Rastafarian, I decided to take the plunge and buy some of this, as previous shaving attempts had only been mildly successful, and I nearly put my back out trying to reach the more difficult bits. Being a bit of a romantic, I thought would do the deed. I thought I'd do the deed on the missus's birthday as a bit of a treat. I did it well in advance, and working in the North Sea, I considered myself a bit above some of the characters writing the previous reviews and wrote them off as soft office types. Oh my fellow sufferers, how wrong I was. I waited until the other half was tucked up in bed, and after giving some vague hints about a special surprise, I went down to the bathroom. Initially all went well, and I applied the gel and stood waiting for something to happen. I didn't have long to wait. At first there was a gentle warmth, which in a matter of seconds was replaced by an intense burning and a feeling that I can only describe as being given a barbed wire wedgie by two people intent on hitting the ceiling with my head. Religion hadn't fe featured much in my life until that, <laughs> until that night, but I suddenly became willing to convert to every religion possible to stop the violent burning around the turd tunnel and what seemed like the destruction of my meat and two veg. Struggling to not bite through my bottom lip, I tried to wash the gel off in the sink and only succeeded in blocking the plug hole with a mat of hair. Through the haze of tears, I struggled out of the bathroom across the hall into the kitchen. By this time, walking was not really possible, and I crawled the final yard to the fridge in the hope of some form of cold relief. I yanked the freezer drawer out and found a tub of ice cream, tore the lid off and positioned it under me. The relief was fantastic, but only temporary, as it melted fairly quickly, and the fiery stabbing soon returned. Due to the shape of the ice cream tub, I hadn't managed to give my chocolate starfish any treatment, and I groped around in the drawer for something else, as I'm sure my vision was going to fail fairly soon. I grabbed a bag of what I later found out was frozen sprouts, and tore it open trying to be as quiet as I did so. I took a handful of them and tried in vain to clench them between the cheeks of my ass. <laughs> this was not doing the trick as some of the <laughs> some of the gel had found its way up the Chutney Channel, and it felt like the space shuttle was running its engines behind me. <laughs> this was probably and hopefully the only time in my life I was going to wish there was a gay snowman in the kitchen, <laughs> which should give you some idea of the depth I was willing to sink to in order to ease the pain. The only solution my pain-crazed mind could come up with was to gently ease one of the sprouts where no veg had gone before. <laughs> Unfortunately, Grunt, alerted by the strange grunts coming from the kitchen, the other half chose that moment to come and investigate and was, invest and was greeted by the sight of me, arse in the air, strawberry ice cream dipping from, dripping from my bell end. <laughs> pushing a sprout up my ass whilst muttering, Ooh, that felt good. <laughs> Understandably, this was a shock to her, and she let out a scream. And as I hadn't heard her come in, it caused an involuntary spasm of shocking myself, which resulted in the sprout being ejected at quite some speed in her direction. I can understand that having a sprout, fout, that having a sprout farted past your leg. <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night in the kitchen, probably wasn't the special surprise she was expecting. And having to explain to the kids the next day what the strange hollow shape in the ice cream was didn't improve my status. So to sum it up, V removes hair, dignity and self-respect. Right. Alright, one more. I've had two more because the last one that I'll read out is actually a poem. This is the last sort of story. 
this is from Tagnut Mandeville. As a highly competitive amateur athlete, I have long been aware of the benefits of a highly polished scrotum pole and hair-free saddlebags, especially when going for the longer look, as displayed by Linford Christie in his famous lunchbox. Previously, I'd used the old-school method of a cutthroat razor, but as you can imagine, this was a tricky and delicate operation. And to make matters worse, it was difficult to get into a comfortable position at the chair at my local barber's. Anyway, I am quite hairy down there, and my snippet valve looks like Brian May's plug hole. So eventually the barber said he could no longer perform the task for me. He also said, looking up my wizard every Saturday at 11.30 puts him off his lunch, as he normally has toad in the hole, followed by chocolate-coated donuts as a Saturday treat. He did not want to leave me in the lurch and said that he'd read some excellent reviews on Amazon about Veet for men and suggested that I give it a try. Like many other reviewers, I made the mistake of not reading the bump properly. I used the whole tube and completely coated my cock eggs, bars and nipsy with the stuff. Anyway, I lost track of time and it was the foul stench of dissolving clinkers and melting hair that brought me to my senses. As I looked at my watch through the putrid fog that had formed around me, I could see that it had been applied exactly 5 minutes 59 seconds. It's only meant to be a 6 minute application time. This presented me with a problem, as when the shearing pain began, I was outside my flat, sat in the communal gardens, in a deck chair precisely 100 metres and 3 flights away from my bathroom. It was as if I had lowered my undercarriage through a volcano and into Hades, whereupon Beelzebub, annoyed by the uninvited invitation, jabbed me in the rectum with his fork. I took her from the deck chair like Usain Bolt out of the TV adverts. Within seconds, the bathroom was filled with steamy, fetid bass broth. And I had the clock weights, Biffin's Bridge and Sheriff's Badge under the ice-cold running water at the tap end of the bath. This did not please the missus, as she was relaxing in there at the time, surrounded by floating petals and candles. Although she did say that the sight of my ring piece flashing like a brake light was impressive, and she was pleased to see that my arse barnacles had all but disappeared. When I looked at my watch again, I realised how quickly I made it up the stairs, and the idea dawned on me that I have discovered a 100% legal sports performance enhancer. Now when I compete in a competition, I dab a small amount around my Samantha Janus, and taint exactly six minutes before the race is due to start. This proved to be particularly effective a couple of weeks ago, as after crossing the hurdles finish line, I accidentally won the high jump and steeplechase too, looking for the water jump to wash the stuff off. Now, I can all hear you thinking that none of this is particularly extraordinary, especially given the reviews, that, the reviews that you've already read. However, when I tell you that I am 45 years old, 5 foot 4 and wear 15 stone, and I used to do the shot put, that should put things into context. As this is an Olympic year, it's got reviewed last year, I think Tagnut and Mandeville, whatever their names are, should be redesigned with hairless nether regions, and the British squad should use my technique and be sponsored by Veet. Although I don't recommend it for the beach volleyball team. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> These are fantastic. I wish Amazon would actually put together a book of the funniest custom reviews because they could fill up several chapters just with this. I'll finish off, because I realise this video's been going on for about ten minutes now. I'll finish off with a poem that someone's wrote uh, called Mike the Biggin. Sergeant Slaughter and his two lovely daughters do get the occasional trim. New bird on the stage, nearly <coughs> half my age. My purchase is a bit of a whim. The instruction book did not get a look, although I thought I knew how to use feet. Whipped up my tower while stood in the shower, spreading it liberally all over my meat. I flipped off the cap, lifted up the old chap, pushing the limits, I'm sure. I wanted to groom in the valley of doom, now my starfish is bleeding and raw. I tried to keep calm washing off the napalm, leaving me all of a fluster. You could boil a small lake, or cook a big steak, with the heat from my genital cluster. <laughs> Less grass on the wicked, it's still not cricket. It does, add, it does add an inch or two. A full week passed, how long will it last? I still can't sit, stand or poo. You may well cry, but tears will dry, leaving balls as smooth as jam jars. My schlong looks huge, still no sign of pubes, so I'm happy to give it five stars. <laughs> oh, right, that's it from me. Goodbye.